leading the nation. It is called Can He or Can't He? Here we go, Chris Canty. Can Tua win the MVP? Can he or can't he? He can't, G, and it's not because Tua isn't playing great. I think the Miami Dolphins are the team to beat in the AFC East, but there's a guy in Kansas City named Pat Mahomes who's on pace to break Peyton Manning's single-season passing yards record. He's got 25 touchdowns to seven interceptions, and he's quietly putting together the best season of his pro career, throwing touchdown passes to 11, count them, 11 different receivers. Right now, Mahomes is the betting favorite. Next, can Kirk Cousins lead the Vikings to the Super Bowl? Can he or can't he? He can, G, and it doesn't feel right that I'm saying this because we know Kirk Cousins can't step up in primetime games, but the team is undeniably really, really good. He's got the best record in the National Football League tied with the Philadelphia Eagles, and when you look at it, they've got a defense that's opportunistic. They're top three in takeaways, and their offense can score points in bunches, plus they have a top ten rusher. And then here's a question that three weeks ago would have seemed ridiculous. Can Tom Brady win his eighth Super Bowl? Can he or can't he? He can, G. I'm not going to bet against Tom Brady. I'm just not going to do it. And even though they're 500 right now, this team is still in position to win their division. And if Tom Brady gets to the dance, how can you bet against him? He's 21-5 and five in home playoff games, G. He's made the playoffs 19 times. Only three of those playoff trips Tom Brady was one and done. So there's a chance that he's going to make a deep run once he gets to the postseason. You know, it, it's such a week-to-week -week league. The last two weeks, they've looked so much better, and all of a sudden, a lot of us believe. And then I found these comments really interesting. Bruce Arians talking to a Buccaneers blog, and his take on the season, he said, I don't think it was fair to Byron, meaning Leftwich, when they were struggling earlier. Nobody is going to say that Brady was playing bad, but he was playing bad. He then goes on to say, I'm really optimistic about the rest of the season. First off, we're getting healthy. Tom smiled at practice last week for the first time this season. He's going to be fine. I thought that was – it's just worth – I don't even yeah. know exactly what to yeah. make of it. Yeah. But when you hear uh, Bruce Arians say, hey, no one else is going to say it, but I'm going to say it. Brady was playing bad, and now he looks better. And, you know, again, we all understand the announcement they made a couple of weeks ago. Maybe that uh, removes a little bit of uh, pressure yeah. from – I don't know what, yeah. what, what it is. One way or another, what are you seeing right now? Yeah, I mean, I think Bruce Arians and his loose lips might be the reason why he's not the head coach of that football <laughs> team anymore. But I appreciate it, Bruce. Please keep talking. And it may be true. I didn't I – didn't see Tom as the issue coming up into this point because there were so many other things to point to, but this team feels better now because their defense seems consistent. I know it's not fun to talk about. I know we want to point to Tom Brady and say he can do this, he can do that, but we all know when they won the Super Bowl in Tampa Bay, it was the defense that dragged them through yep. the playoff run, and it is the defense that is going to get them in and make them good enough to be competitive this season, yep. if anything does. It's not going to be Tom Brady, it's not going to be those receivers, and it's certainly not going to be the offensive line and I don't think it's going to be Bruce Arians or his kangaroo. Well, maybe not. Again, I, I just thought that was worth hearing. Yeah. But I agree with you. I'm not sure it means anything. Here's what I will say. And again, I, now mine is that rare genius that will not be fully appreciated until long after my time. <laughs> but I said no to doubt. you two weeks ago, too many of the things that are happening with the Buccaneers just don't make sense. Like Tom Brady and Mike Evans not being on the same page, that doesn't make sense. This defense with all these guys on it being awful, it doesn't make sense. It figured to turn a little bit, and it is turning a little bit. What are people saying about Brady and the Bucs? Well, they're not expected to surge here. It's more like a stumble into the playoffs. But this is a team that can still contend. NFC is wide open. They're going to get the four seed most likely if they win their division, which is largely expected now. Mm -hmm. Talking to people privately in Tampa, they know like they're just simply not as good as they were the last two years. Like they lost too many pieces, mm -hmm. too many injuries, and they really need young players to actually help them spark things. Rashad White, running back, yes. Kate Odden, the tight end, two rookies they really like. So they're hoping that infusion of youth actually helps them get to the finish line. Now, I like it. Look. A couple of years ago, we saw them go on a, on a, a somewhat unexpected run after their bye week. They never lost again. They never looked back. They won the Super Bowl. I'm not saying that's uh, no. what's going to happen here, but I don't know that it feels impossible. You talk about the four seed, maybe even the three. The teams out west have a lot of losses as well. Right. Things could shape up kind of nicely for the Buccaneers. If you look at their schedule coming up here, they got some winnable games. Yeah, I think they've only got two teams on their remaining schedule that have winning records, mm -hmm. so you feel good about that. You also feel good about them winning a division because they're going up against three teams that have backup level quarterbacks, so I think that'll give them some runway to figure out their identity. But the biggest thing that Neek brought up is their defense being able to stop the run. I think Rashad White's impact on that can't be understated. He's a guy that was able to allow them to control time of possession against the Seattle Seahawks defense. And your defense actually has a chance to get a break and get off the field. And so when you're coming back, you can absolutely fly around where you're only playing 40, 50 snaps in the game. So I think that's a big part of their formula for success. Not to mention giving Tom Brady some balance and not asking him to drop back 50 times. 
They, I, well, let yeah. me ask you one okay. more thing. But I thought you wanted a no, specific No, I, 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 I did because uh, part of Chris's sale on the Bucks is that they don't play any teams with winning records for the rest of the season. The Bucks also do not have a winning record. Right. So, like, suggesting <laughs> that they are already inherently better than all these teams are going to face, they have not been good this year. They've been so wildly inconsistent. And I guess the encouraging thing and the scary thing is – it's always a different hole on the ship. Right. If it was one hole, maybe you could go patch it. But it feels like every other week is like, oh, secondary's not good. D-line's not good. O-line's not good. Receiver's dropping the ball. It just seems like something's going to continue to pop That's up. That's fair. But the one guy who has always been able to patch almost every hole that he has ever encountered is Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. And so when Bruce Arian says he smiled at practice yeah. last week, one of the things that we thought was missing from Brady was the all-in yeah. quality, the, the, the leadership quality. Maybe some of that is coming back with whatever resolution he He's had in his personal life. Yeah, a fully focused Brady is good for everyone, and not only for his play and preparation, but for the preparation of everyone around. If Tom Brady is there and Tom Brady is locked in, it's really hard, as I was going to say as a young guy, but everyone in the building is a young guy compared to Tom Brady. It's really hard for you to leave and stop watching film if Tom Brady's still there working out. So, yeah, I think that improves everyone's output. Now, there's one thing we know about Bruce Arians. He's never, he's never lacked the knack to talk smack, and he does so <laughs> in the direction of Brady once just, again. As going. we continue, <laughs> why? Because they play tomorrow night. They take on Tennessee. This just days after Rodgers and company kept their season alive with that comeback win. And Rodgers, of course, connecting with Christian Watson for three touchdowns and their running game came to life. Yesterday, Rodgers was asked if all that was sustainable. I don't know. I mean, sustainable is one of those words that gets said a little bit too much, I think, this year. So I'm going to stay away from the sustainable. I think it's all week to week. It really is. You try and find your identity throughout the season. In fact, the most important identity is competitive greatness and going out there and playing your best when your best is needed. We hadn't played a four quarter game uh, all season. I felt like that was really close uh, Sunday. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just looking. At, is sustainable a word that we're using? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's like a pretty reasonable way to ask the question. Hey, you did something Sunday. Do you think you can do it again? Can they? Um, I don't think so. I, I think that he, uh, Aaron Rodgers showed a real a, a lack of confidence in his crew, which he's been up and down. I've yeah. been impressed with the way that this team has fought throughout the course of the season, and they still have confidence. But I do think it's a little too little too late. And their best asset, it plays right into the hands of the Titans. They're a good Ooh. running running team and the Titans defensive line is great at stopping the run. So are you saying he lacked the smack because he knows the pack is white? <laughs> I'm going to play. I'm going to play. You, you were listening to Big Pun this morning. You don't know what I'm talking right. about. I'll play for you in the break. Right. That's what you reminded me of. I was listening to Taylor Swift this morning. That's but that's true, what you were. Here. I, actually, it took me 20 minutes in the car to write that. True story. Uh, but but, but, but the, I, now I've forgotten the question because you've distracted me. No, the question is, is it sustainable? I know Aaron doesn't like the word, but it seems like a pretty reasonable question to me. Can, is that the formula for that team they need to win. They're in the playoffs now. Right? Yeah, they basically yeah. need to win every game, and Tennessee isn't easy for anybody. Can yeah. they do that to the Titans tomorrow night? Well, Aaron Rodgers needs to pipe down. He's being too loud. But here's the thing. I do <laughs> think there is a potential for this to be the formula that they replicate down the stretch. Now, I don't think they're going to have much success against the Titans, but they'll have opportunities against yeah. teams that are on their schedule in the back half. But what you saw was Aaron Rodgers being able to utilize the run game to create separation between second and third level defenders and take shots downfield with play action. I mean, the Christian Watson touchdowns, Two of the three came off a hard play action with Aaron Rodgers yeah. turning his back to the defense. And there's a reason why in that game, he averaged more air yards per completion than any game that he's played in this season. 11 yards per attempt in the air, 16 yards per completion in the air. He's only had one game in his most recent MVP seasons where he actually did that. So I think this is something that's going to bring out the best version of Aaron Rodgers. The question is, is he going to be amenable to it? Because we know that's how Matt LaFleur wants to play. But I don't know if that's necessarily Aaron Rodgers being sold on that game plan. And you saw some of that friction on the film when it got to fourth quarter overtime. Yeah, so when I talk to teams, they say Green Bay is not to be slept on as a fringe playoff team. Right. Like, that could mean eight and nine, right? I feel yeah. pretty confident saying that one team in the NFC is going to sneak into the playoffs with a losing record. And so Aaron Rodgers, when I talk to coaches, they say everything's still intact. He's still that guy, maybe a little bit less mobility. So if Christian Watson, one of these guys, can find that second gear, he's just been frustrated making mistakes because he hasn't had chemistry with those guys. Well, so. well, I, how, and what is the sense of the relationship right now between him and LaFleur? Because as you watch that play when he comes running off at the end and he's 
he's yelling at him. And uh, Chris is talking about what they did offensively. Is this what Rodgers wants to do? Is it what the coach wants to do? It's not obvious to me that the two of them have been on the same page all year long. And there's that moment. Great job by the crew having that ready. Uh, there's that moment as he walked off the field after that third down at the end of regulation. What is the sense of just how satisfied Rodgers is with what they're doing in the Well, offense? the sense is when things broke down or when he needed a safety valve, he went to Devontae Adams. He always had that in his back pocket. Now that's gone. LaFleur and Rodgers have been you know, pitted with each other to try to figure it out, and there have been some growing pains with that. And so I think the relationship from what I hear is still good, uh, but you have moments like that that have crept in. The scariest thing about this team is the one thing that we always thought we could trust, even when they were bad, was that Aaron Rodgers is great. And what we saw in the Detroit game is when I was completely out on them is because Aaron Rodgers was bad in that game. If we can get an Aaron Rodgers that you can trust and and these other guys start to grow and figure things out, yes, maybe they have a chance, but I honestly think they've dug themselves too deep a hole to to get out of it. Perhaps. Mac, if he asked Rodgers, about that moment and Rogers basically said I was frustrated with the play call and so was Matt which begs the question well then who the hell's making the play call (laughs) if he doesn't like it and he doesn't like it then I'm not exactly sure who it is that liked it in the meantime do they win tomorrow night that's the question and the answer is Ooh, 50-50 say yes, yeah. but the wrong side of the table says yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the players say no. Why not? They can't stop the run. Yeah. I mean, gee, Derek, Derek Henry, Henry coming down here. Yeah. Good luck with that. And we know how physical that Titans front can be. We saw they hit Pat Mahomes nine times, sacked him four times. I feel like if the Aaron Rodgers and that Green Bay Packers offense becomes one-dimensional, it could be a long night. Packers play. running game is almost as good, though. There's question marks around the coaching in Green Bay. You know where there should be no questions around coaching. Tennessee, quite possibly the best coach in all of football, Mike Vrabel. Okay, so we'll see if they're able to do it tomorrow night. That's where it begins as we continue on a very special